Just before starting, I just wanted to say that I have a couple of other videos about Pietra and Fredrik and their events. Links in the description. And now, let's roll the interview. Welcome to the fifth part of my interview project. Today I have uh, Pietra and Fredrik. And there is so much to say about you. Um, so I, when I was planning for this interview, I didn't know where to start. So, so I thought maybe I should just start uh, where I met you uh. a couple of years ago. You are one of the most creative souls that I know, at least the most creative couple that I know. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about all your uh, interesting projects. But let's start where I met you. Uh, that was maybe three or four years ago when you organized an event called Immortal Bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was one of the most memorable events that I've ever been to. Uh, I must say it was this combination of a party, but yet it was an art exhibition and a lecture. Um, yeah, it, it gave me the chills because I remember now all... all and based in, yeah, an old, yeah. in an old Catholic church as yeah. well, that was there. Yeah. So basically when you arrived at this place, uh, the first thing that happened was a lecture by uh, Dr. Paul Codenaris, yes. who was talking about uh, how different cultures handle the remains of their, uh, their dead. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it was basically a lecture about skull art. Yeah. And, uh, things related to that. Mm -hmm. And skull art is something that is very close to what you are doing, or it is partly what you are doing. Yeah, it's well. part of what I'm doing, yeah, that's right. Uh, and as well as, as that, the, uh, the event you also exhibited, your skulls that you can now see here in the background as well. Yeah, part of the collection was there. Some of them are, you probably remember. But mm. as it was Paul's painting, you know, photography is also on display with the mm. uh, human skull art and then the wildlife taxidermy bone art. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was a really great event. Yeah. Mm. I can't believe it. Oh, I, I think that... It's uh, four years ago. Yeah, it's four, yeah, four years ago. Yeah, and that's the building, the, the church in itself was one of the ideas, oh, we need to have a, such a same building ourselves. Mm. Uh, so we looked for churches, uh, uh, caves, whatever, but we, we ended up with, with this uh, amazing building. Yeah. Yeah, we are going to talk quite a lot about mm. this actual building and what's happening in this. Mm. We are now uh, in a house and also a project and basically it's, it's your concept that you are working with right now, Helsing Light. Mm. Uh, um, as an old school uh, building in the Mid Sweden, I would say, even though we from the capital would like to see it's north of Sweden, yeah. but it's actually kind of in the middle. Yeah, kind of middle. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's let's uh, let's go to the history. Um, I think I've started to get your introduction now. But how? What events did lead up to the event that I met you at? Italy, maybe. Yeah, so we started by, I started creating skull art, um, working with um, taxidermy art in 2011, and that's mm. how we also kind of met. I, I first turned you into a zombie with makeup. Yeah, and then you big zombie party. Yeah. yeah, and then I, I ventured into the skull art and uh, I started working under the name Skulls and Bones Artwork, and you actually bought one of my skull artworks. Yeah. And, uh, we got stalked together. you on Facebook and then <laughs> I got in love. I need to meet that girl again. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then you know. moved up and then we started <laughs> discovering that we had a lot in common. We had yeah. a crazy mind, you know, together and came up with a lot of ideas of, of you know, just to find out places we could, you know, visit. And um, and I was invited to be part of an exhibition in Italy uh, mm -hmm. to exhibit my skull art. And, mm -hmm. uh, we went there and discovered a few alternative artists that we wanted to collaborate with and we needed to have an arena to work on. Mm. So we invented an alternative festi festival. Subscene called, festival. Yeah, yeah. Subscene festival. So that was, I think, one of the first events we organized together. Yeah, it's on the back side of our 
jar, uh, jar yeah. Yeah, in the barn. Mm. Yeah, it was quite nice. So that was the first event and that led us to coming up with the idea to Immortal Bones. We wanted to collaborate with Francesca again, a violin player. Francesca is the girl from Italy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wanted to collaborate with her again. Um, and we also got in contact with Paul Codinaris, who you were mentioning with the, mm. uh, you know, human taxidermy. That's part of a... Oh, you're getting hot. So it's... Uh, and then we had... We also... Did, I remember we had... Uh, a burlesque show artist yep. at that end we had a choir singing <laughs> that's really weird. Yeah, it was a weird yeah, combination a but it was a great event and yeah. then we decided perhaps before that was midwinter glow i don't know we yeah, it was before yeah, yeah we had midwinter glow 2012 the first one mm. so we've kind of just been doing like uh, inventing all of these uh, alternative events yeah. yeah i think it's it started with our relationship when we met, we just started. We do. We did the first Italy, the first uh, summer festival. I've done midwinter glow five years. Yeah. We haven't stopped, and that. Uh, so you met. It was a creative explosion. Yeah. Um, and we're still doing it. A lot of things happen. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of things happened, and then we ended up here because uh, I thought uh, I, I also work as a makeup artist, but I mostly focus on special effects and masks and gore. And uh, I've never been that much into beauty makeup, but mm. I, I, yeah, it's part of the business. But I really wanted to create some, you know, I'm a great fan of fantasy films and, and creatures, and so I wanted to have a place. I dreamt of my own big studio, art studio, and we dreamt of a place where we could you know, create something together yeah. and, you know, we always have big visions. So mm. all of our events and festivals and everything led up to eventually finding Helsing Night, where we are now, our first building, actually, that we own together, that yeah. we can turn into a crazy mm. artistic, you know, adventure and share mm. it with others. Mm. So I remember, remember when, when I met... Uh, you rented a place and I, I was going from Stockholm every weekend here and we talked about how cool could it be if we did something in the, in the forest, invited people from around the world to, to visit us, maybe people like I want to go on a treasure hunt with them and so on mm. and make people see what we do in, the, in, the, in this village. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're so hot, Max, you can yeah. go on the floor. It's very hot here. I can uh, just hear him like. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he can stay there. So, go like me. So, there is. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say that there is so much to this story. Yeah. Um, and I will try to explore why this is so special in a way. But what I find about what you are doing is that it also always has an element of unexpected. Um, when I heard about your event, the event where I met you, Immortal Bones, mm. the, the first thing I thought about is, that was like, I've never heard about anything like this, I cannot miss this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I remember you came yeah. up alone on the train, you didn't yeah. know it, and I was very uh, impressed by that, because you, you came all the way from Stockholm to Gävle. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was really cool because then, yeah, it was a success yeah. that we had. I remember thinking mm. it was a success because we thought this is going to be a very, like, weird, in a good yeah. way, event. So let's see how it goes. It turns out that it's easy to get people from, from UK or, or other places in, in Europe to visit this, mm. this place in, in, the, in the countryside, but getting people from Stockholm Mm. To come is, is harder. So when you when you come and we say, well, yeah, we have managed when we get the people. <laughs> I, think, I think that's like um, probably one of the reasons is that it feels more exotic. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. like a of big course. adventure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But 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 what I was thinking about is that uh, you always have some kind of alternative art touch. To what you're doing, the events mm. that I've seen so far, um, and and that's part of the unexpected. But but alternative art or alternative culture is something that has been. Uh, it's a core line in a way. It's something that's really what we want to you know work with, and mm. somehow I think what we stand out with is that we also put in a mix of traditional, mm -hmm. so that you know if you come from the alternative 
venues or you know genres and then you come to our events or or you know take part of anything that we do we always have that special touch of you know traditional and we make them two worlds meet mm. and then somehow, i think it's a meeting that's mm. the magical thing happened the unexpected that you're talking about because as you see the traditional people when they see alternative people they're like, wow what's that uh, look at the tear or whatever mm. uh, and the same goes for on the other side when you have uh, people are doing a lot of crazy alternative stuff mm. S- see a traditional craftsmanship or, or something like that and say oh that's nice okay that's how i can do it or maybe i can apply that to to, to my thing things instead and make a making some cool stuff up from that mm. so i think it's that the mixing between that's the formula for what we do. And I also think we've got a great mind because we <laughs> always can hear, but I think we've got a really creative mind. And when we work our ideas together and we start talking to people with great, you know, similar uh, minds, we come up with stuff that is like unexpected and, and that you've never seen mm. before. And somehow we just seem to create concepts that maybe never been done before in a way. And that is the touch of the unexpected because we always want to have that as a bit of a spice that you should come to mm. an event and not really know 100% what you yeah. are going to get. You're going to get a taster, you know, maybe from the marketing and stuff like that. But when you're here, you should be part of an experience where mm. all your senses are really, like we try to work with, you know, your sight and your hearing and your you know, feeling and what, what's, what's the smell and what's, you know. So I think that is one of our best mm. ways of success the unexpected mm. you know? and we always notice the details because we are like okay we, can, we can't happens. miss anything just, just look at the the, the gray uh, area what do you call it uh, air skirting. yeah yeah skirting we, we did you can do it twice but we did it like four or five times because uh, maybe it's not perfect. So we, everything we create, <laughs> we're, great. Nerds. we're, we're yeah. nerds. We need to make a per- perfect so you can't differentiate it from uh, the wall. It should mm-hmm. melt together. It feels like a complete experience. Another part of it is also that I think it's a bit unexpected. Me as a big city guy, um, yeah. that, that you are taking... Um, I mean, I wouldn't be that surprised if this happened in a big, big city, mm. you doing these kind of exhibitions or kind of events. But you are doing this in kind of a rural village, uh, yes. far away from, from any major city. Uh, Sweden is quite small. <laughs> um, well, I think that is part of the, the success that we yeah. are not in the big cities. We are not based in the big city. We are in the rural countryside. We are in the forest, you know. And I think, as you say, if we would, you know, shout out, there's a big event happening in Stockholm, mm. there's not going to get a lot of attention. It's like 200 and, other big events. Yeah. So. But if we do it here, we're going to be like, everybody's like, what is going on? What's mm. that? And then the word starts like spreading. It's like, and we reach, you know, with the tentacles to Stockholm, to, to other cities. Mm. And people find it a bit exotic and a bit like, shit, what's going on in the countryside? What are they doing? Yeah, and we want we want to do it uh, on the countryside. It's like the main goal is to have this on the countryside mm-hmm. because we want to have the the combination of the unexpected. And if you do something like this in a countryside, that's unexpected. Uh, and it's, it's also it's an inspiration. The countryside is an inspiration yeah, for is, creativity for us. So mm-hmm. I could never see myself, to be honest, doing this in the in the big cities because. I think it's a bit easier here. I mean, maybe our difficulty is to get the people to come here, mm-hmm. you know, how the logistics and traveling and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But then we have great spaces, big spaces. We have everything around us. And I think it's uh, it's also part of our success that we are based in mm-hmm. the middle of nowhere. But it has also led to a couple of unexpected reactions from the surroundings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, we have so many stories, but... Yeah, people the find witch it. Of, uh, of yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's witchcrafts and there's uh, like a lot of people. Blood god and blood bone god. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah we'll there was in story. the beginning yeah. a lot of people thought I was uh, the witch of the forest, and I did have you know so many <laughs> satanic rituals, and I don't know what and believed in blood gods and you yeah. know what not and. Uh, 
It was in a way first we thought it was a uh, maybe the, the overreaction, but then it turned into like a big overreaction. Like there was yeah, like and then it become a mission for us to 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 prove to prove them wrong. It's like yeah. it was like a mom seriously. thinking. Yeah. You know, I think it was because people are also scared because this is mm. like a bit of the quiet. You know, countryside. Mm. Usually it is so in Sweden. You know, the countryside is quiet and it's a bit like you know the ideal place for a summer place and. Mm. and and then all of a sudden we just do and then you organize a festival <laughs> in your backyard <laughs> yes. and people and, came to because yeah. we had a, a festival and DJs in our barn yeah. that and, and two DJs with masks yeah, uh, yeah, and, yeah. Smokes and yeah, yeah. smoke machine yeah, yeah. smoke machine and, and i remember we had like four people standing there and they had all the people like, yeah. no yeah. but we had people saying that log dance i did for what's that in a bar well uh, you know, country dancing, and yeah. they thought it was a, that kind of party. So they came up to me and they were asking because we were playing like real loud alternative music, <laughs> electronic music in the barn, and they were like knocking like me like, yeah, "Yeah, when is the like country music starting?" And exactly. I say, Never. <laughs> and I was like, no, Never I have nothing against that music, but it was like I was like not on this event, and but they stayed. Yeah, they, they stayed. Did go yeah, up. Yeah. They went on five in the morning. Yeah. Because then they realized, okay, so we can have fun here. You know, this is. Um, yeah, and that's also one of the things that old people meet young people, and they were like 65, 70 yeah. years old, and they have never ever heard electronic music and seen alternative people. So. Yeah, this because then one of them came of up us. shouting to the DJ, just Rammstein, Rammstein. Yeah. <laughs> it was like what? <laughs> we didn't have a clue. So yeah, it turned out that that was like a really crazy event, but it, it also has its downfalls because it's been sometimes tough, of course, mm. when you know people talk bad about you or you know think you're doing something that you shouldn't mm. do. But it's the same story also with the Midvinterglöv, which is probably the. People that know you, I think there are a lot of people that know you from organizing that event mm. as well. Uh, because you did it for five years and it went from kind of a small gathering to having more than 2,000 people yeah. uh, and coming for kind of... Uh, uh, in Sweden we ser- celebrate the Lucia uh, weekend, but you did, on the Lucia weekend you did um, a Christmas celebration combining alternative and traditional mm. yes. uh, light and darkness. Yeah, and you know that I, I say that to, to a lot of people that everything you see on Mid Mid Glow, we have done it by yourself. The music, the lyrics, they have two different uh, languages we speak. One invented language. Everything is is uh, by hand. It's mm. nothing just uh, copy paste. It's, it's your pure yeah, passion. Yeah, and that was also one of the, I think that was the festival that really, or well, the winter festival that really made us into, you know, sk- bad, bad people in the village because we took this Swedish tradition of Lucia mm. and turned her into a black, you know, black dressed version. We made her darker because mm. we went, you know, into the folklore stories and, you know, mythologies. Mm. And people hadn't heard of Lucia in folklore, and we, you know, got really inspired by that. And it was nothing that we wanted to do, you know, anything against the traditional Lucia. We just wanted to make the alternative Lucia. Mm. Yeah, but, but when you touch Swedish traditions, sometimes the funny thing is that we we touch this Swedish tradition hard because we 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 we, we dig down in the history, and that's the real tradition that we we show because. Lucia isn't like a blonde girl with a white dress. It's, a, it's mythology in different ways. Mm. Yeah, um, but and it was a bit of a like shock because I was so into because I read into the, the history books that she was, you know, they thought in uh, Lucia night that she, she could turn into a prey bird and she had like big wings and she came and she could kidnap the children and it was a bit dark and scary. Mm. So I, because I like uh, creating costumes, I was like, oh great, I can work with wings and, you mm. know, create some feather costume mm. and... And we were really like naive because we thought it was really cool, like the film set, and we're gonna have choirs like singing really old traditional folk music and yeah. and like torches and, and big statues and 
And it turned out people were like writing in the letter, you know, newspaper and commenting on Facebook that yeah. banned this event and this should never happen and please But make then sure. it happened again yeah. and again and, and again. again and again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and in the end it became one of the uh, biggest very popular yeah. 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 Uh, So in the end it was one of the biggest like Be because that's like these two thousand people, they are mainly from from the surrounding no well no. maybe but no half of them are seriously like from all over sweden traveling yeah. from over so that yeah. was the big success as well oh, wow. yeah that we could reach so many people and we ended up in the news and we ended up in the to yeah. tourist paper you mm, know yeah. number one festival to visit in the winter mm. and I think I did a, like statistics on that on based on facebook data by the way on on nearby people that day and it was 25% from, from nearby, the rest mm -hmm. were from Sundsvall, Östersund, mm -hmm. Stockholm, and other places in Sweden, so yeah. not a new tour tourist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was great. I mean, 500 the first day, and we had a big winter storm, and then everybody mm -hmm. doomed us and said, you know, this is too... That's it because is. of... Yeah, it was blowing like 25... Uh, yeah, they blame no witchcraft. Yeah, I remember. and they say... Yeah. So some people were saying it served you right, you know, you had the bad weather and that's why we were like, well, we're not going to do it again next year and next year and next year. And it was a success. And finally, you know, eventually all the people really started to like it because it was, again, I think some of them were really afraid. Yeah. And, and a little note that we, we, we did the uh, five years, like we complete the wheel and we named uh, the last midwinter glow to Helsinglight. Mm -hmm. And this is Helsinglight. People didn't understand it when we, we, we named the last movement to go to Helsinglight because we started something new mm -hmm. and this is the new. Mm -hmm. so we're starting now with Helsinglight. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm very happy that I got to take part of the Midwinter to Glow event two times. Yeah. Uh, Which years did you? The two last years. Two last years. Yeah, yeah. big years. The second last year, uh, me and one friend came and then. I managed to bring along yeah, a bus. 16 people yeah, 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 yeah. next year. Yeah, yeah. If it would have been uh, one more year, it would have been uh, 50 <laughs> or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a sleep now, midwinter glow. We said maybe we will awake, you know, we'll awake it here. 10 years, yeah, you believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't know. So it's sleeping away. It's yeah. not dead, it's sleeping. Mm. And resting. It will, yeah, it's resting, mm. exactly. So basically, all of these events that you did led up to what? you are doing now, Helsing Light. Mm. And it's not only the name of this house, it's also, what is it? It's the name of our company as well. Yeah. So it's, it's the name for our collective, you know, just dream. Yes, dream. the name is, uh, we invented a name from, from what we're doing. The, the, the formula, as we said, about combining two things, dark and light, and first we have, Light in Helsing Light, then I have Hell, <laughs> Hell Goddess, Helsing Light. So there, there is also that, but thing people. But we're based there. in Helsing Light, yeah, yeah. that's also yeah. the connection. So it's like an undertone of something else also. Yeah. But it's always combining the opposites. Mm. Yeah, but it's, uh, Helsing Light is kind of when we came up with the name, we had the building, we, we turned it into a joint name, and we really wanted to find something that, you know. A place for creative, like a creative mm. haven. That mm. is Helsing Light. Creative haven, yeah, yeah, it is. A cultural meeting point. As, as, as we talked about earlier today, it's, it's hard to understand what, what exactly we do because we do a lot of things. We do art, we, we do workshops and uh, yeah. events. Um, but creativity is the, the word that combines every everything that we do. Mm. When I asked you about this earlier, you said that Helsing Light is a creative resource. Yeah, resort. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's finding the words. But yeah, resort. It should yeah. be because the dream is also when this house is finished, you know, we're renovating it as it is now. But it is to have a resort, but a creative resort. We're going to have like a really nice sauna and, you know, relax area in the in the. <laughs> basement we're gonna have creative areas here where we're gonna have workshop areas we're gonna have this where we have this art gallery we're gonna have an alternative artist in resident flat and so it's gonna be a resource where you can come up and just be creative yeah. or enjoy creativity yeah so small houses outside also yeah. cabins to stay in and mm. so the entire complex is gonna be a creative resort mm. that's it's a big it's dream yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, i'll talk about going from fantasy to reality later, but 
just let's dig into it a little bit more. Um, so where are we now? This is our brand new gallery. We, had, we were thinking when we bought this house three years ago, we were so excited and we started a bit here and there. We were, you know, ripping wallpapers down and we were just doing everything everywhere. And yeah, it's three house. floors and a lot of rooms. And, yeah. Yeah. and I'm quite impatient. You have got a bit more patience, but I'm very impatient. And I said, this is not leading anywhere. I want to start now. We need to, to, to launch something open. I can't take it, you know, to wait five years. Yeah. I need a studio. I need somewhere to create. I want to exhibit. So we decided this is the old gymnastics hall because this used to be a re an old school in the 1920s to 1965. So this is the old gymnastic hall. And we decided in the design that this is going to be the art gallery, the concert venue, uh, conference uh, meetings. Like we're going to have like horror nights here, watch the yeah. horror movies. And so we decided to do one room at a time. Yeah, we said, okay, let's do a room that is creative and fun because mm -hmm. it's how fun is it to do like a conference room or uh, that's not or a kids kitchen we hate being in a kitchen by the way but uh, <laughs> but like an art studio and an art gallery and, and events and music that's that's us yeah so Let's we need to start that. with a room that we can use and you know invite people to yeah. come along so the first room to finish was the art gallery and i wanted to exhibit my artwork because a lot of people come home to our place and, and I don't want them to to just come home to my place. I want to exhibit all of my artwork in a beautiful environment. And uh, so we set a deadline. We just said, so we yeah. just open it 29th of June and we've been working our, our, our stuff. Yeah, it's been really like... That's two one, weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, Three weeks hours ahead. before we, we opened the gallery. The, 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 they were still digging, dig, digging outside the, the, the porch yeah. for, for we had like uh, water and uh, the stuff that we was just digging and then three hours before okay now it's finished just take your machines away then you're going to have 200 people coming here yeah. <laughs> so it's fine it's, it's been one of the you know stepping stones or a goal come through to open the art gallery and also to have this as a venue for when we we hopefully are going to have one concert this you know late summer yeah or, or it's autumn. autumn yeah and we have a tattoo you know tattoo uh, tattooist what do you call them tattoo yeah. artist tattoo yeah. artist artist tattooist we have got a tattoo artist here visiting from ireland now who's doing tattoos here in the art gallery and that's also been you know live art and people can come and have a look and and he's been really fully booked and he's also part of the special effects course that's happening now mm -hmm. so it's great to have one room finished and also show the concept um, yeah it was really hard to just focus on one room because we are like everywhere it's okay let's take one room at a time so but it works mm -hmm. when you concentrate uh, the focus but so yes. what you were saying uh, you, you mentioned the course yeah. uh, because right now there is actually a course going on in this house you've been working with it the full day and the last few days as well yeah this is the seventh day actually of a 10 day course so we're trying out the, the building now also for special effects and mask making so we have a, a small group of people here now uh, mm. creating masks silicon masks so they've been sculpting and we've been mold making and today we're demolding. Tomorrow we're going to run the silicone and on uh, Saturday we're going to airbrush and paint and Sunday finish it and with a photo shoot. Yeah. So it's been a 10 day, it's, it's, it's a 10 day course in mask making. Like um, I said, like eight, almost 10 hours a day in yeah. work. So it's like a... Yeah, well, we've been yeah. having a lot of fun. And yeah. we, and, uh, but because we're trying the, the rooms out now, so at the moment we don't have the toilets running uh, or anything, any water here. So we, it's great to be a small group now mm -hmm. and we can make it work. Mm -hmm. But the next step is to... And it's one of the activities that you are thinking about. Yeah. This is something that we are going to do mm. yeah. in this house. This is going to be... Yeah, I think you can say that Helsinki will be four parts. The one part is the art gallery. Uh, another part is the event ex uh, experience thing mm. that are going to happen here. And then we have special effects uh, courses. And then we have alternative artists in residence. Mm. We're living here. So it's four parts. Mm. What's the alternative artist in residence? Yeah, you're better than explaining <laughs> that. 
Okay, so the alternative artist in resonance is going to be a program where artists can apply to. So within the genre of, you know, mu if you're a music writer, composer, you are maybe a painter, dancer, whatever you... Tattooist. I don't mind. Yeah, tattooist. You can apply to this program and we are going to create a really nice little flat upstairs and you will live here and stay here create here and then you can use also this art gallery to exhibit your artwork or you know have a little show or concert or whatever so this is a project we're going to start working on next mm. and it will be unique in that way that we are focusing on alternative art or culture so with a mix of mainstream of course and traditional artwork and culture but the main focus is Alternative mm. art. Get away for alternative artists. Exactly. You can exactly. come here. Yeah, come here and stay, yeah. create, you know, enjoy life on the country. This is the creative resort we were talking about. So you come here, you create, and you just use nature as a resource to creativity. You meet like minded people, maybe like on a workshop like this, people are working downstairs on mask making. You have got a tattoo artist here in the building, you're upstairs composing music. So it's all going to be a really nice place for everybody, but the artist can stay here for mm. maybe a few weeks or a month. We haven't decided on the program, we are working on this project now. Mm. So it's in the, in the first stages. Yeah. So as you can hear, <laughs> there are a lot, <laughs> a lot of things going on. Uh, That's why I get sweaty myself, because <laughs> I'm thinking, what are we getting ourselves into? But this is us, yeah, there's so much going on. And, and I would say that um, what you are doing is something that, uh, I'm not saying that it's not unique, but it's something that many people maybe had a dream of, like creating something mm -hmm. remotely like this, but you're actually doing it. Yeah. Um, but you need to be crazy yeah. enough to do it. And not so you are taking you are taking the step from a wild fantasy to actually making this happen. Yeah. yeah. It's not been easy. I mean, a lot of times we are, you know, pulling our hairs and just mm. thinking because there's a lot of funding going into this, and you can't do it. Like we need so much money to just fi finish this entire house, and that's why we have to decide to do it in smaller steps. But there's time also to be fine sometimes you have to you know work and you have to put this on pause because we need to get the funds in to build so i think you just have to have to be really stubborn crazy yeah. creative and also get support from everybody around you because mm. it's not easy to do this on your own yeah and as i said two months ago i quit my job just to, to focus the energy on, on on this and i think it's the best thing i've done and it's it, it works uh, and I think just to, to, to feel inside that this feels right if, if you do exactly that okay this feels right continue doing it doors open and the things happen and, uh, and we're also expecting so we're having a family this also <laughs> so it's, it's a lot going on but we yeah. always take it day by day we, mm. we plan ahead but we still think you know every, everything is possible so we're yeah. having a baby in September, end of September, but we're still, you know, everything is, uh, as long as you don't panic, <laughs> I think that's the... Uh, Isn't that from the book, Don't Panic? Yes, probably. No, yeah. but I think you need to realize that everything is possible. Sometimes Stay it just calm. takes... Stay calm, everything is calm. possible. Yeah, exactly. It might just take a bit longer than you think. I think that is one of my biggest problems, that I, I am so impatient. I mm. really want things to happen, like quick and I have to just calm myself down and just realize not everything is going maybe as I planned. Yeah, but we have meltdowns some, some days also. It's like, what the fuck are we doing? This is crazy. And it's like, oh. and then, okay, calm down. And then, okay, this is still the best thing we yeah. do still. So. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, I am impressed and I'm following your work uh, closely to see what's Thank happening. You. Mm -hmm. So another um, related thing is that you are working together as a couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yes. and uh, how does that work and how, how do you make it work? I think we have tried everything because we have 
Well done. No, I think we came up with the recipe seriously because it's not easy always to oh, work no. together and try to have a relationship together and make everything work. And we are different in so many ways yeah. and similar in so many ways. And we have a different culture because Petra is from Finland and from Sweden, so that's a big gap. Yeah, so we have really cultural differences where I am like fast now, quick, get it going. And yeah, it's you... like, a, let's have a meeting about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have decided no more meetings with me and we just yeah. do it now. More or less, I do what I'm good at, better do what she's good at and then we meet in the middle, more or less. Yeah, I think that's the best recipe we've ever tried and we came to the conclusion that you shouldn't mix too much. Yeah. You should do stuff together, what you find is great fun, like we like designing and you know concept making mm. and talking about storytelling and stuff like that. But you should do what you're good at, and I should do what I'm good at, and then yeah. we can be because. Yeah, now I also have realized that. Uh, yeah, you can be my boss. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I realized that you, what you say could be faster many times, but I like. Oh no! I want to do it my way, but okay, let's do it your way, and I accepted that. Yeah, it's <laughs> always like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. Quick decisions. Yeah. But it's difficult, so of course, it's difficult to make it work sometimes because mm. we and then we have a bit of a fight, and then it's all over, and then we start over. And then so you have to have your meltdowns. Yeah, yeah. I think it wouldn't work otherwise if it all went smoothly. What would yeah. be the point of you know, it, it has to be challenging. Yeah. One thing is that people, what they see on the internet is not exactly what's happening on the, on the other side of the camera because, of course, we, we argue also, also over stuff and. Uh, Sometimes we're like, I'm doing it my way, and you're doing it your way, and like, and then you're still doing it in another way. So yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't. It's like, you you want one way, you want one way. Let's do a third way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it is like that. Most yeah. of it is my way. That, Most that. of it is your way, and I need to compromise. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No, we need yeah, to realize yeah, yeah. that my way is the best way. You always the high way. The fastest way, your way, my is the best way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you you told me earlier that um, you are the artist, the most creative mind. You are the most organize organized mind in some way, and together you make decisions. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like. When I'm doing these, I'm very disorganized, but I'm, I'm always like, okay, let's, how does this end up in numbers? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm analyzed. Yeah, analyzing yeah, yeah. things and yeah, marketing. Analytic yeah, mind, but, and uh, I'm an engineer, so what, what, I need to have some sort of Excel sheet in this. <laughs> and I hate Excel sheets, so I'm more of the creative mind there. But you also, we create together, like a yeah. lot of concepts we create yeah, together. But if concepts. it's about the artistic, like, you know, costumes or masks or thinking about, you know, what artistic uh, environment and stuff yeah, like that. Scenery and, and what we are heading with Helsing Night and, and so on. Um, so that would be a good way of describing how we also divide it. Yeah, because I, I, I see what I, what I have in my mind is like a big, big map, like a Game of Thrones map, and I see the, the complete story in my mind, and I re repeat it every day. Uh, so I know this place from my heart and uh, what will be in 10 years. Mm. Uh, Petra is more here and now, uh, and I'm in the future. Uh, so. I, I can get like, like, really upset because I'm like thinking next week and I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll I'm thinking like 10 years. Like, 10 years. 10 years, from years we do, should do like this. And I'm like, uh, stop because I don't want to hear one more word because we're here, we need to finish the art yeah. gallery. So and then we, I get bored, so, oh, we need to take the, this now. Oh, oh, fuck, this is boring. In 10 years, this will be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> that we are still together. Or? Yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I, 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 from what I understand, uh, from how, how you, you described all the events that led up to this, yeah. it was kind of inevitable for yeah. you to not create something together. Yeah. True. They haven't done this anything. Is our, I think of this as my biggest legacy. This is what I want to leave behind. You know, if there's anything I can leave behind together, you know, we, what we can do. We want to make a foot print that's mm. big enough, mm. you know, just for people to know we were here. I mean, not that I have, but it's just I want to make something like a really big footprint mm. that I did something that I wanted to do. 
mm. not what everybody else told me to do. Mm. I think that is really what's driving me forward. Something that I wanted to do. And it's my house and your house. And we can do whatever we want to. And that's always I'm like, well, we can do yeah. whatever we want. Yeah, I want to live my fantasy. This is the life side. I just, I want, just want to live it. Live the fantasy. Yeah. And uh, I hate restrictions. I really do. I hate to be restricted by... If someone says to me that you can't do it, then it really fuels me and I just want to do it even more. Uh, we have no money, Petra, next week. What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, restrictions. No, but I don't want to be restricted. I, I feel like to be creative, you can't be stri- restricted. There's, it doesn't add up. You can't have any restrictions. And that's why I always want this place to be to get. We have a vision, you know, that you should feel free here. You should mm. feel able to create here. You should come here and just feel like, I'm not restricted. I can do what, okay, maybe you can't, you know, paint on the walls here, but we can make some separate walls for you to paint on that. Mm. So there should always be a way around, mm. you know, problems and you know finding mm. solutions because we need to make it work somehow wow so i think that i've asked you yeah. the most important things yeah. that i have on my little yeah. agenda here but is there something that you feel that why didn't you ask about this or something that you could like mm. tell the world about no i just I think that's uh, really important to let everybody know that they are always welcome to contact us and to mm. come here and come for visits or, mm. you know, workshops or stay. We used to say, come and stay, come and play. Mm. Yeah. Mean? Yeah. So don't be afraid to contact us because we are very friendly and the drawer is always <laughs> open to yeah. creative. You don't even have to come here to create. You can just come here to enjoy creativity mm. of others. So we don't want, you know, anyone to feel the pressure of, having to, you know, be at a certain level of creativity yeah. or, you know, artist or alternative. You can Nothing. come in at work also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's very important just that we always, we like to collaborate and meet new friends and, you know, yeah. just make it into an adventure. So if you can bring more people here. Yeah. That's so basically an in- invitation yeah. to the world. Yeah. Come, yeah. To exactly. come to Helsingland. Helsing come to, come, come to Helsingland. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, that as I said, I, I find it always <laughs> interesting to hear what you are up to, and I can't wait to to follow this journey yeah. along, uh, and uh, and also hopefully help out with something in mm. in the future. Yes. I'm still signing up for cooking for a, for a course when yeah. you have the kitchen ready. Yeah, exactly, when the kitchen is ready, oh. we should do that. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, there's a lot of, of collaborations yet to be born. To you, welcome. So to, to everyone who has been watching this interview, this is the end. But I just would like to add that if you like this, make sure to check out also the other interviews that I've done with interesting people. Uh, and uh, there is a shorter edit of this if you want to see more of uh, the actual art, art pieces and more of the, these houses check out that as well um, and what more is there to say if you liked it please share and like and <laughs> subscribe and everything like that um, and with that said i think it's time to say thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you around soon goodbye bye, bye. thanks for watching thank you so much for watching if you liked this video a lot consider joining the Candy Army. That's my Patreon page where you can support this channel and this kind of content if this interests you. Anyway, I hope that I'll see you around soon and also check out the playlist with other interviews with interesting people as well and the other videos with Petra and Fredrik. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.